they certainly won't be losing any sleep over Nick Davis, I can, I can assure you of that. Um, yeah, so it's something that I'll address next week, but it has no bearing on the team at the moment. We see it as serious, and um, it goes against about what we are as a team. So there is um, some of that loss of trust, I suppose, from the playing group. Still important seconds left here in the third quarter. Paul Davis had it, he got a high tackle. And he's come back fitter and harder than he's ever been. Nick Davis has become one of the great storylines of this year's final series. Axed before the round 15 game against West Coast for not complying to team rules, he spent six weeks in the virtual football wilderness of the Swans Reserve, serving his penance before being invited back into the Bloods fold in round 21. And then just last week, he repaid the faith with a telling goal on the three-quarter time siren as the Swans beat Fremantle to secure a trip back to the big show. Hi there, nice to have you back. With our show, White Line Fever, on a Wednesday evening, that means Terry and Caro with a number of talking points to get through. The makeup of the grand final teams, we'll get to that. The likely candidates to coach St Kilda, your calls, and we meet another Irishman making his mark in the AFL. But first, as the grand final countdown continues, oh, she's excited. <laughs> Tiffany Cherry, good evening. Good evening, Clinton. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thousands of fans have packed Subiaco Oval to watch the West Coast Eagles' last training session at home before Saturday's grand final against Sydney. David Wirrapunda had his hamstring put to the test, but there's still a big question mark hanging over the defender's selection. The West Coast Eagles were trying to keep grand final week as normal as possible, and they'd managed to keep a lid on the hype until running onto the track. It's been 12 years since West Coast's last premiership and thousands of fans are confident this squad can break the drought. Ten minutes on the track wasn't long enough for Daniel Kerr to soak up the atmosphere, but David Weapunda concentrated on proving his fitness. He missed last weekend's preliminary final with a hamstring injury and he's in a race against time to force his way back. You know, if he gets through tonight doing what he's asked to do, um, not by me, by the medical staff, and they declare him fit, then he's going to be available for selection. If we're punders fit, John Warsfold has the final say on who misses out. It's a harrowing decision for a man who was controversially axed from a final side in what would have been his last game of footy in 1998. That's just reality. You know, it's, um, that's just what's got to happen. You can't play 23. So uh, we just get on with the job. Veteran defender Drew Banfield was Weir Punda's replacement last weekend. He's played 264 games for the club and is likely to hang up the boots if he can get his hands on another Premiership medal. Uh, no, he's not guaranteed a game, no, but he's very seriously up for um, selection. So there's no room for sentiment or nerves leading into a grand final, even if the Eagles' last four clashes with Sydney have been decided by four points or less. Regardless of anything else in the past, we're in very good form. We're a very um, even, balanced squad and we've proven that uh, we can play and beat anyone anywhere and uh, that's what we'll do this week. After leading West Coast to their only two flags in 92 and 94, Warsfold could become the first man in nearly three decades to captain and coach the one club to a premiership. David Parkin achieved the feat at Hawthorne in the 70s. Well, my, my real motivation is to see the players get the opportunity to become premiership players. You know, I think that's what football's all about. and. Uh, you know, um, I've had that opportunity and I'm certainly very grateful for that. So th that's the focus. Sydney co-captain Barry Hall has admitted he feels guilty. He was the only player to hold aloft the Premiership Cup after the Swans won last year's grand final. The champion forward says he's desperate to beat the Eagles again so Leo Barry and Brett Kerr can share the magical moment with him this time around. Barry Hall is Sydney's most recognisable face, it's superstar forward. The pictures of him with the Premiership Cup will be forever etched in the minds of the Swans fans, but that doesn't sit too well with him. I suppose last year you know, I spoke to the players uh, in the leadership group that I'd, I probably felt a little bit guilty about, about that because they were very much a part of, of uh, the team's success and um, the captain rotation and you know, I, was, I was the lucky one. So I felt a little bit guilty about that, but um, hopefully I'll get to share that with uh, two other blokes to be nice. Hall has led by example this final series. Possibly in career best form, he's booted 11 goals in two games. And he's expecting added attention from all Australian fullback Darren Glass. I suppose with, with me and Mick uh, in, in reasonable touch, it's, 
yeah, we're, we're sort of tossing up what West Coast are going to do and what to expect. And um, look, to, I, I think um, I think Wish will, will back his players. Um, you know, he's got all all Australian um, sent out uh, full back, and um, Adam Hunt is a pretty good player. So I reckon he'll back his his players, but um, we're certainly looking at every scenario. The build-up to Saturday's game has been completely different to last year. The excitement has been replaced with cool confidence. And Hall agrees with his coach, Paul Ruse, that the Swans are better placed to win the flag this year. I think we're in better form going into the, the grand final than last year. Um, and look, I suppose the, just the more attacking and we're playing, we're playing on a lot more now and, and splitting the game for a bit. Goal sneak Nick Davis appears to have gotten away with breaking team rules. Davis was on a strict media ban but did an interview for a Melbourne newspaper. He was exiled to the reserves earlier this year for speaking out against the club. Nick Sparky shouldn't have, but that's, that's fine. While the Swans plot how to tackle the Eagles midfield of Lamborghinis, there's another player they need to do plenty of homework on. Defender come forward Adam Hunter booted four goals against the Crows last week and is proving one of the most dangerous players in the competition. At the moment, most sides um, probably expect him to come down at some point during the game because he's been so successful in the forward line. So we'll certainly be planning for that like we had the last few times. Unfortunately, the planning probably hasn't done much good the last few times, but hopefully this time we can um, you know, close him down as soon as he can. Terrific, Tiff. Thank you for that. We'll see you tomorrow night, as I say. Good evening again. Terry Wallace, Caroline Wilson, welcome along. The last time. The last time on a Wednesday night. We'll try and hold back the tears. How are you going, all right? Oh, I'm good, Clinton. How are you? Good. Says Tony in Perth. Will you please ask Caro to pick Sydney as she hasn't picked the Eagles in any finals so far. She <laughs> obviously hates us. <laughs> Who are you tipping? Look... Clinton, if anyone can pick with certainty who's going to win on mm. Saturday, they're a better man or woman than me. I, it, it, is, it is just so difficult to pick. Sydney really do seem to, have all, to hold a lot of aces. They're going in again with an unchanged side. They've got no injuries apart from Jared Crouch, who they will miss because yep. he, he did a reasonable job on Judd last year. Um, West Coast, gee, they looked hungry. You looked into the eyes of Chris Judd and Ben Cousins as Adam Goods was making that Brownlow speech yeah. the other night. The steely resolve, I mean, of course they wanted it last year, but they wanted twice as much this year and they are a better team yeah. too. Can that be an X factor in, in a case like this against a group that largely has already got a premiership medal? It can. It's really hard to judge. I mean, there's, there's two ways of looking at it. Uh, do West Coast feel a little bit more nerves because of the fact that they lost last mm. year and if they do happen to lose this year, I mean, the acid's really on them that way or does it work the opposite way where that steely resolve that uh, Carolyn spoke about is enough just to give them that little bit of X factor? You don't know. Mm. What about the space in the forward line for Hall and O'Loughlin? Does Busher give them that space again? Well, I think the way that uh, he's coached all the way along, he's, he's really worked on a one-on-one -on -one uh, campaign all the way through. I can't see that changing in the last week of the year. The, the, fo the, the two sides have you know, played within a kick of each other four or five times in a row now. So, uh, yeah, it's been that close. I just can't see him changing that aspect of it. They've got better personnel than when they played him a couple of weeks ago. So I would think that he would say that's enough for us to get the result regardless. Former Swan Paul Williams said on Sunday that it'll be a much higher scoring game this year. Personally, I think if the game spreads open, I think West Coast win. I don't have any hesitation about that whatsoever. I think that what we saw with Sydney against Fremantle in the third quarter, if it starts to open up and it's a run and carry game, I think uh, the West Coast will beat them. Mm. The past 12 weeks for Nick Davis has been a roller coaster of emotions, the controversial statement, the axing, the almost abandonment by the Swans, then the fight back and then... A spirited 20 or so minutes here in the third quarter uh, last Friday night which made it worthwhile. The way he's fought back has won him a lot of friends. It has and um, I, I just saw Sarah's report about the fact that Barry Hall wasn't happy with him speaking to Mark Robinson of the Herald Sun. Look, if you read the Paul Williams, uh, the Paul Williams if, if you read his quotes, the Nick Davis quotes, they're you know, it, um, it was a good story, yep. but th there was nothing outrageous in those quotes. I reckon he's just been bailed up somewhere, maybe called up. I, I spoke to him soon after he was dropped. I got him on the phone at home. He was cooking a stir fry <laughs> on his lo new low fat regime. I think he'd been getting a bit stuck into the Kentucky Fried just quietly, Clinton, at the TAB oh, simultaneously. No. But, um, you know, 
He said a couple of things. I think there were about four or five quotes in that story. Yes, I owe them. Every player in yeah. this team owes this club. I don't think there's anything really wrong with that. It may, maybe he should have just hung up and said nothing. But look, I, maybe he's not the most savvy kid in the world. He, he took the call. He said a couple of things. Yeah. Uh, that goal at three-quarter time... Oh, it was huge. ...at Telstra Stadium was, was the goal that won them the game, in yeah. my view. It was a great kick under big pressure. He, he's, he earns, he's earned his spot. And he could be the X factor, given there's going to be a lot of time and attention on Hall, O'Keefe and O'Loughlin, who shared 14 goals on Friday night. There's a bit of deja vu about just the way he goes about it. Uh, last year it was two weeks before the grand final. This year it's one week before the grand final. He's a class player. If you get the ball into Nick Davis' hands, I mean, he's going to do something yeah. with it every time. The third time this week, though, Clinton, is it an omen? We've seen individual, individualism creep yeah. into the Sydney story. We saw silly Darren Jolly say on Sunday that he wouldn't play if his wife had a baby on Why grand was that final silly? day. Oh, please, Clinton, don't don't have this argument with me. Um, clearly, he's going to play, mm. and it was I think his wife being a bit dramatic. I mean, he's got three weeks to go. It's probably not going to happen anyway. We saw Adam Goods win the Brownlow, and now we've seen Nick Davis speak against media rules. Just three little things, mm, but grand okay. final week, just the smallest thing can go wrong. Might be my one, two, three this evening. Who ah. knows? Well, bo both clubs will have a number of different faces to that from grand final day last year. The Eagles with potentially seven inclusions, which I know natural evolution of a team, but that's a pretty high number, isn't it, Sarah? Well, it's amazing, but it shows that they are and were a developing side yeah. last year. And, you know, I think that you've got two sorts of teams that get there. I mean, they're a very young side, the West Coast Eagles, and I think people uh, don't realise that at times. And, you know, they've got so many uh, players developing in the waffle that they, can, they have the ability to be able to change that much over 12 months. As we look at some of these names, Braun Waters, Quentin Lynch, both Jones, Graham, uh, Armstrong, if he plays, uh, all weren't there last year. The Swans likely to have four that weren't there last year. The big selection question for we're a punter coming back in, who do you leave out? Is it Banfield? Is it Armstrong? Is it CB perhaps? I think it's Banfield, and as a tough a decision as what that will be for John Worsfold. I mean, they play similar positions. Uh, if you leave anyone else out, you're actually tipping the apple cart up, you know, in relation to who plays what positions, having the flexibility in your side. I don't think that at this stage Drew has the ability to go forward and really be able to impact games or come off the interchange bench and play other spots. So it'd be a tough call on John. Mm -hmm. If they lost by less than a goal last year... Yeah. And they had Gardner, who had a poor game, yes. and we're told now was carrying an injury. And Big Lynch, Thomas Hurd's favourite footballer, <laughs> we found out on Monday night, has come in. I mean, you know, if you say Sydney have stayed the same, West Eagles Coast are a win, lot better. That they are, they are a lot better. But yeah. all those pl Barry Hall is a much better player this year, I mm. believe, even though he kicked more goals last year. Adam Goods has had a better year. Ryan O'Keefe, Craig yeah. Bolton are all much better players this year. Hunter, do you starting forward or back? I think he's starting back and moving forward. And everyone sort of says that this move of John Worsfold's, uh, you know, it's, it's too predictable. It works every time he does it. So I, mean, I can't see why he would change what he's done on a, a fairly regular basis now. Paul Ruse and John Worsfold are the two very cool, trendy, in vogue AFL coaches. Every club looking for a new coach, and that's been narrowed down to one now, St Kilda, are trying to follow their models. What have you learned from them? Oh, look, I think you learn from every coach in the competition. I mean, those uh, those particular guys, I mean, are always in control, and that's yeah, I mean, that's an important thing. I think it's a, a vital thing in today's football. I, I think there's still um, a little portion of the past. You know, the Ron Barassi get in there, rev them up uh, in some of the uh, the older coaches in the competition because that's what they grew up with, and uh, that's what they knew. I think uh, the younger people in the game, they just want an understanding of how they're going to get better or how they're going to win on any given day. And I think that's what Worsfold and Roos bring to the table.